Sometimes you discover something really brilliant when you make a mistake. Yeah. Um, like, for instance, with a with a decorative design, maybe you you design it and it's too big or it's too too flashy or whatever. But in your journey towards that design, you have learned so much that you can then integrate into your even in your everyday life. Stephen, <laughs> it's so lovely to talk to you. No, absolutely. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited and it's wonderful to see you. I've seen some other of your videos and recordings, so it's it's very nice to see you in real life sort of shit, like, like yeah. this. So thank you. In Zoom, in Zoom live. <laughs> in Zoom live, yes. In Zoom live. Um, but tell me, where are you based? Uh, I'm in Altastenberg in Germany. Yeah. That and is are you... uh, quite close to the Netherlands, actually. And are you originally from the Netherlands? Yes, exactly. Okay, so, so what brought you to Germany? Well, um, we have been coming here in this region since it's a, a holiday region, basically, where a lot of uh, Dutch people go to uh, skiing and in the summer also. So my parents and I, we came here ever since I was a child. And um, subsequently, my grandmother bought um, some sort of an apartment here so that we could visit in the weekend. And that's sort of how our journey here started. And then um, when I went to my guitar building studies in Belgium, my parents moved here fully. So then um, oh, I, I was in the middle of that transition period. So then when I finished um, my studies, I wanted to go back home to basically start my business in guitar making from there. But um, home had changed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New home. So that's how, I, that's how I ended up here, basically. But now, what was it about guitar building that fascinated you? Why that decision to go and study that? Well, uh, I was just very fascinated by how things and objects worked. Uh, like, I could be fascinated by a door handle as a child. Like, how does this thing work? You can really? pull it and miraculously a door opens. So uh, then when it didn't work, like when it broke down, I would be very curious to try and fix it. So I would. Um, and ever since I can remember, I was like that. So then when I started playing guitar when I was 10 years old, naturally, I became very curious how that worked. Yeah. So I started to fiddle around with it and uh, basically to uh, <laughs> destroy it, actually. Mm -hmm. And But that way, I, I got very um, curious about guitar making. And it was a wonderful blend of, let's say, my musicality together with my uh, curiosity with um, working with tools and such. So, so and and the, you play still guitar? Yes, I do. Yeah. And do you think it's important that you have to play guitar to be able to build a guitar? It's a good question. And honestly, in our scene, um, it's not uncommon for guitar makers to not be able to play. Okay. Uh, um, I think there are more routes to Rome, so to speak, in the, in this regard. Yeah. So you can, of course, it's helpful if you play yourself, because then you might understand more easily what the guitarist might be looking for, right? But I know that many of our great guitar makers also from the past were not really players themselves. So if you, let's say, surround yourself with people that uh, supports you in this and tell you like, hey, I, not, I like this, I don't like that, or what do you think of this, why don't you try that? That way you can, by trial and error, also develop your guitar. So I think it's just a matter of having people around you who will um, help you and be um, critical of your work, but in a constructive way. Yeah. But I've spoken to violin makers as well. And, and how important is sound when you make a guitar? I mean, for you to hear the right sound? Well, that's a good question. It's, it's the fundament of our instruments, basically. And I think that the charm of the, of the Spanish guitar really is the beautiful color and the dynamic that this offers you. And I think this is also why it's such a relevant in instrument still, because most other instruments, we have to be honest about this, are louder and have a wider range of volume, let's say, uh, like a cello or a piano. So, okay, so we don't have that huge range of volume. We cannot fill a, um, a concert hall in that kind of way. With an orchestra, especially, it becomes more difficult. But with the guitar, 
um, we have beautiful colors, very delicate, very very elegant, such such beautiful refined taste is very difficult to find in other instruments. And this is why I think our instrument is relevant. And that's also the basis of how I design my guitar, that the sound comes first and then um, aesthetics come into play. And this is something that people might be, um, might think it's a bit strange with me because I built guitars, original guitars with an original design of decoration that sometimes is quite elaborate with, um, a lot of mother of pearl for instance or exotic materials and then people think automatically oh um so th that's what his guitars are about yeah and I mean, naturally i'm very curious about aesthetics and i like um let's say fashion or those kinds of things i'm very interested in those things so they are important to me but i mean it, of course it has to base itself on the fundamental sound because that's why you want to play the instrument right yeah but now how these, uh, so, I mean, you use wood. So what would be the, the standard wood that you use for a guitar? Well, so for the top, I, let me see, I top next to me, actually. Yeah. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, thank wow. Thank you. The latest guitar that I'm working on, and I'm yeah. still Ooh. varnishing at the moment, but oh. it's already looking pretty neat. Yes, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Petra. Yeah, so um, for, the, for the top of the guitar, I usually take um, German spruce. Um, actually, it grows also in Austria and in Switzerland, but they call it German spruce. Oh, okay. And um, this is actually also the wood that violin makers use most often for the top. Yeah. It's basically, the reason for that is it's a perfect marriage between, um, let's say, weight to density um, balance. So it's, it, it has, it, it's not too heavy, but it's still strong enough to withstand the force of the strings, yet it's very light and open to move so yeah. that the string can vibrate very easily without damaging. So that's why I use that for the top. And for the back and sides, um, let's say for the sound, um, it's less important. Than I, and this is sometimes a controversial viewpoint in our scene because yeah. many like to say that, oh, um, if you make a guitar out of rosewood with a rosewood back, then ah, that's a concert instrument. But if you uh, make a guitar with, let's say, flamed maple or with cypress, people will say, ah, no, that's that's more for you know in your living. But it's not true. It it really depends on how you use the wood. Let's say if you have a heavier piece of wood, then you can make it a bit lighter. If you have a very light and soft piece of wood, you just make it a bit thicker and denser, like that. Oh, it's how you work it. Yeah, but but this is interesting now because I would think that the sound from the strings would reflect on the back, uh, you know, on the on the inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and and that that wood doesn't make a difference in the sound. No, no, no. So okay, so let me try and be more clear on that. So yeah. um, the whole body is, of course, important for the sound production, but yeah. it's less so what type of wood for the back that is there. I mean, oh, I the fact that it's wood is already great. That's a good base. Okay. okay. <laughs> so then, and then, of course, within uh, certain types of woods, we have large variety of qualities. Like, is it very dense or is it heavy? Um, is it soft? Uh, and so on. There, there are many qualities. And then yeah. you can uh, manipulate, so to speak, all those qualities to get, get oh, to a similar okay. point of sound, let's say. Now that wood that you have at the back there, what what is that? What is the back of the wood? Yeah. So this is called coco bolo wood. Yeah. And it's a family of rosewood. It's uh, it's a let's I say a nephew. See. Yeah, it's beautiful. I like the markings on it. Thank you. Yeah, it's oh. it, it's quite wow. an exotic. Yes. One of the most beautiful pieces that I've used oh, <laughs> in all of my it, guitars. It's yes. beautiful. But now you. you say you say you oh yeah, I can see it is it's really so beautiful. Thank you, Petra. <laughs> Wonderful. And now but you say that your the decorations that you put on, so you use mother of pearl. So where would you use the mother of pearl, for example? Well, on this guitar, I used a little piece on the headstock, you can see there. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
the fine so you detail. see it reflecting a little bit right yes yeah, yeah. i love mother of pearl it's such a oh, beautiful well, I, stone. yeah it's with 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 women with jewelry it's fantastic but with earrings and ah oh, it's just yeah there is uh, almost a magical quality for me to mother of pearl because from every angle it looks different yeah and and uh, and also you the different types of mother of pearl that you that have yes. uh, different um colors and so on. but um so where do you so that would be the where is your signature decor decoration for example do you well, al always put it there at that um well you usually um when i use mother of pearl not everyone likes mother of pearl on their guitar so on this guitar uh, the owner, because it was a commission, he wasn't excited about Mother of Pearl, only the little thing on the headstock he could appreciate. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, but usually when I make the more elaborate designs, I would go on the bridge and make a pearl inlay here. Yeah. Um, all you would see in the rosette, that's how we call this part. Yeah. The, the, the decorative um, strip around the sound hole on the mm -hmm. rosette, I would integrate some kind of pearl design and there sometimes i've made uh, out of pearl a tulip like tulip design oh, flower yeah. and i would carve them like a tulip or like a rose i've done that too um, and then uh, inlay them around the sound hole oh, wow. i have several pictures on my website about that also yeah it's very, okay. it's very special and yeah. then sometimes i would even do it on the back as well oh i see okay so you do like yeah. inlays, inlays of the mother of pearl. Yes, and yeah. and um, maybe this this is maybe a side side thing, but it might be interesting to talk about for for a short while. Um, yeah. The reason why I got very excited and curious about mother of pearl is because um, I was trying to establish a relationship with beauty for myself because that was something that I lost during my studies, because during my studies, I was not that happy. So I was trying to reevaluate what I am and what I like, what my interests are and so on. I, I mean, I'm not gonna delve much deeper into that because that's the long discussion. But yeah. anyway, I started to just experiment with different materials to see what I think. And then I found ah, this material, it shines, it, it, it lives in light, so to speak, because Mother of Pearl always reflects light instead of absorbing it. So that was very fascinating to me. And then um, you can shape it in all kinds of shapes and create wonderful inlays with this. And as mm -hmm. soon as I start doing that, people immediately notice it and like, ah, that's very special. Oh, ooh. And even if people don't like it, they can appreciate it. Like, oh, that's yeah. a lot of work. That's not nice. Yeah. So that's sort of how that journey started. And and uh, in the so the um, well now I want to ask you in on that topic during your studies did you feel very restricted uh, into <clears throat> how you built the instrument? Is is that oh, why yeah. you wanted to put your own stamp on it in a way? Oh yeah. You've put that very well. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, in some sense, when I look back on it now, you have to be restricted when you're starting to learn something because yeah. the possibilities are just too much. Uh, let's say an example, when you're in the supermarket and you have to buy a shampoo, there are a hundred shampoos. It's just too much. So yeah. you have to choose something. So it, I don't. I mean, it would be so much easier if you would have just have a choice of five, let's say, or three. Yeah. This would make life easier. So in that sense, in my studies, my teachers were very strict in that way that we didn't have, I mean, up to a certain point we had freedom. But anyway, I'm a bit more wilder and creative in my endeavors. So sometimes mm -hmm. I just like to go all the way like, oh, why don't we do this? Like, why not? And then uh, it was always a no. So that was deeply, deeply frustrating at some parts. So then when I finally finished and I graduated, and I did finish it, which I wanted to, um, with good grades even, so that was good. But anyway, I then on figured out like, okay, now I can do my own thing. And now I'm going to make a guitar with a very thin top and see what happens. Because yeah, you, could, you cannot do it, it doesn't work. And just don't don't try that was what i was told basically but then i figured like okay uh, if it breaks 
sure. Just I need to find out. I had a deep desire to to explore like this. And actually, that that quality has helped me a lot because when you make a mistake, um, or sometimes you discover something really brilliant when you make a mistake. Yeah. Um, like for instance, with a with a decorative design, maybe you you design it and it's too big or it's too too flashy or whatever. But in your journey towards that design. You have learned so much that you can then integrate into your, even in your everyday life. Yeah. But I find it always very brave when people start doing their own thing. And I know what you're saying, it's, it's important to have the basics and to have that, the rules of the game. But then the, the people who go out and break the rules a little bit, you know, that's, that's very courageous to do that. But then again, um, is it for you difficult to convince people who like the traditional type of guitar? Um, is it difficult to, to um, convince them that what you are doing is something that is also fine? Yes, it's, it's, it's a very good question. And I think um, the acceptance for me, and this was kind of a luck of the draw, has been there from the beginning. Because okay. you see what I did, Petra, my designs are original, but they are heavily, heavily influenced by some of the great romantic and Baroque era instrument makers. So sometimes, and this is the biggest compliment I think you can get as a young artist, people will say, ah, oh, that's a copy of something. Oh, okay. So yeah. they don't think that I designed it myself because, because I'm actually not making postmodern style instruments. That's a whole different thing because uh, I make, I, my designs are always symmetrical. Um, they use the, the, the rule of thirds often. And this is what, was, has, what has been done forever in instrument making. So people recognize like, oh, that's some sort of a Baroque style thing. So they've already accepted it as that. It's not that I have to challenge their perception with um, sort of a new thing. The only thing that I challenge them with is the way how they view the guitar, because let's say in the last 80 years, guitars have become uh, very modest, let's call it, in their oh, design. Okay. Mm. And I am reviving some of this uh, late romantic, beautiful um, um, Jugendstil design oh, with wow. a lot of yeah. decorative elements in it. And this is what I love in my personal life as well. I'm fascinated by this. And then people immediately recognize it as that so that's great so they've already accepted it that as that but then of course coming to the point of a true exception would be for them to buy it right oh yeah and that's yeah. and that's and that's a whole different topic but yeah. um i mean i have sold pretty much all my guitars also the ones that were elaborate i would say that those ones were even sold quickly quicker because the kind of customer that i do have at the moment is an early adapter style so they, okay. they like this, this sort of exploratory design. They like that uh, my guitars are different than most of guitars, let's say. But they do like that my guitars are still traditionally built because I built in the late romantic uh, Spanish style of building guitars. So that's what we would call traditional. Okay. But now this is interesting that you also say, well, let's talk about the, the marketing uh, part of it because it's yes. always what artists say, you know, it's, it, that's the, the difficult part. So you can make the guitars and you, you have all the ideas and you are the artist. And now to get, the, to get people to come and buy the, the guitars, is that a difficult part for you, the marketing side of it? Is that, does it take a lot of effort for you? um no if oh, i'm okay. honest yeah it's and and i'm again i i think um i am not the usual uh case in in this in this regard yeah. because i actually like marketing and i like okay. presenting myself i like doing these sorts of things with interviews i, I like talking about my work and i can enjoy um, talking about art in general um, I am not shy in that regard. And I know many great colleagues um, find it difficult to, to present themselves in that yeah. way. 
Uh, and I, I've catalyzed and used social media in, to my advantage in this way. And that's actually how I found most of my customers by mm -hmm. becoming my brand. Because often, and yeah. maybe you have noticed it in Instagram too, is that I am often next to my guitars or my work, or I share um, uh, my image, let's say, with, with my work. And I've, I've created a marriage there, so to speak. Yeah. And I think this has been very helpful because it's, if you play my guitar, you have a part of me with it as well, because that's how I present the sort of the whole package with it. Yeah. Um, and I think that is refreshing to many people, because especially in the in the guitar scene, where the usual guitar maker is a is an old uh, an old gray guy <laughs> with oh, glasses, okay. <laughs> so to speak, right? Yeah. To have sort of a more to have sort of a more flamboyant young guy doing this sort of thing is different. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's for me now uh, that I, I start talking to people and, and I mean, I discovered you on Instagram and yeah. it really is also for me something that I, you see the instruments, you hear the instruments, but you never really think of the person who's making these instruments. And, right, um, right. and, and this, what you are doing is really refreshing because it's it, like you say now, you, you, uh, it's not just the instrument anymore. It's now you put the face with the instrument, which is lovely. I love it, you know. And um, but <laughs> thank but, you, Petra. Yeah, no, but um, also um, I've, uh, one a uh, violin maker mentioned to me, and this is also something that I want to ask you: is that uh, you know, there's so many also manufactured. Uh, um, violence you know that's that's been built on big scale and they are functional in a way and and you know some yeah. students have to really invest and they have to really spend a lot of money when they want a specific handmade instrument um is there that appreciation is there do, do uh, people really understand that the quality of the the sound and the 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 quality of the music that's being made depends very, very much on the the manufacturing of this uh, instrument. Yes, it's it's a it's a really important question, and I think what helps is if you meet guitarists in person and if you just do an honest comparison or a test, let's say. Um, so if you um, we, we call this uh, festivals that we go to, like music festivals, guitar festivals. So there people will come with their own guitar. I will come there with my guitars and then people can try and basically uh, just explore yeah. the instrument. Mm. And then if they, if they have a bit of experience, then they can hear the differences and the subtle differences. But the, the problem is, is that those factory built instruments, and we have the same problem in the guitar scene as the violin world the level of, let's say, functionality of those instruments is so high now that, uh, and uh, it, it kills me to say this, but it's true. Uh, often they're, they're pretty good. They're fine. You can play with them and there's, no, there's not a problem with them, let's say. Yeah. And so let's say that the handmade instruments then, they, they will give you uh, a more refined sound. They will give you it will give you more of everything, yeah. but um, for, for way more cost. And this is from a marketing perspective also problematic because you can buy a guitar from China for, for let's say, 2,000 euros. And um, I mean, it's fine, right? You, you, you can use it and it's okay. It's yeah. not great, but it's, it's okay. So then if you, the next step is, oh, uh, 6,000 euros for a handmade guitar or more. Yeah. There is, a, there is a problem there, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but I think, again, this, this comes into how I approach the marketing side. With a guitar that you buy from China, you have no idea who made it and probably like 10 people worked on it. But with me, I make it. You can yeah. look back on my his history on Instagram or Facebook and you see the building process that I went through and you can see how I made it. And this way um it becomes more personal yeah and it 
I notice that people sort of get relationships with my instruments even. It's very strange. Strangers. When I meet them on the, um, in those guitar festivals, I've never met them, these guitarists. And they ask me, ah, Steven, um, did you bring Ilona with you? Or did oh, you bring really? Frida with you? <laughs> because sometimes I give guitars a name. Oh, I they see. Have the, and, yeah. and they followed the guitar in the three, four months that I built it. They looked at it every day and they... They have this whole story with the guitar, like, oh, yeah, I, I look at it and it's like nice. And I, they have this whole affiliation. So yeah. then when I first noticed, like, aha, I have something here. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the story, I think people now in this world where everything is, like you say, you know, you never know the, the if, if it's built in China, it's, you, you don't know the person behind them but now there's a story and yeah. now there's that's something well um if you give them names i'm looking forward to seeing a petra guitar <laughs> <laughs> well there, 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 there's even the reason behind the names that i've given to those instruments oh i see okay okay so that yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll have to be more influenceable uh, or influenceable uh, to, to have a guitar named after me. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's not like that. It's more um, somehow they have a link with women from my private life. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. In that, in that regard. So, oh, but it, it's, it's, it's not like ex-girlfriends, not, not that cheesy. Oh, okay. It's like, yeah. But it's... It, but it's it's yeah. wonderful that you it's wonderful that you do that because um, I've been speaking to winemakers and it's also interesting how their wine labels and uh, you know how they uh, the labels have these stories and I think it makes the artwork very much interesting when there's a story behind it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, the eye wants something too. Yeah. So. Of course, the wine, let's say, needs to taste great and have a great um, smell and so on. But of course, it's nice if the bottle is elegant and if there's like a stamp on it and if the label is sort of taken care of. And the thing that I found with my guitars also, if you spend a lot of time on the details that people will see, here's the strange part. Many people won't see those things consciously. But if it's there, it creates peace and it creates trust mm -hmm. and it creates somehow uh, a reassurance that this instrument is good because if it has a mistake if there's a hole in it or if there's some damage people will see it instantly mm -hmm. but if there is let's say hidden beauty i call this then um they don't have to worry about it yeah and then they can focus even more on the music and the expression and, and, and the beauty that they do in their artistry. So that's why it's so important to, um, to, 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 to work on those details. Yeah. Now that's true. So, so let saying. me ask that's you also, Petra, because you started this whole interview journey during the pandemic, right? Yeah. I actually so, started... Ex as, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, go, go ahead, please. I actually started before. I, I photographed around 500 artists in their windows in Vienna to wow. raise awareness that artists were still at home. And then I, I started writing a book and I wanted to know more what goes on around the world. And then I discovered I could do it on Zoom. And then it started during the pandemic, but then it just continued because I think artists have such interesting stories to tell. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. And what has been the consequence for you doing all these kinds of interviews? It's enriched my life. I mean, I here I talk to a guitar maker. I've never spoken to a guitar maker before and, and, and I don't know the story. So it's really enriching. And uh, I've met, uh, I mean, I think I've done about, at this point, over 350 interviews. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so I think, you know, it's, I've, I've really met some wonderful people and I, um, I do it on, on the um, uh, idea that I never um, persuade people to come on the interviews. These are all people who just want to be, you know, interviewed. So it's very much um, 
free for anybody to do. So uh, this, uh, and yeah, and I and I go on social media and, and find people, but people just come on my way. So this is how I do it. Yeah, incredible. And I'm so happy no, that I... you. <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm so happy that you came on my way. That you uh, because I discovered yes. you on Instagram. Yeah, no, it's. Uh... Well, the... The algorithm works in mysterious ways, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to my advantage, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so. I think to, to the both of us. And um, it's really beautiful that you say that because I've had similar experiences. It's sort of um, like ask and, and you will find in sort exactly. of a way, like in the, in the biblical sense, because I have found, especially during the pandemic, many artists, musicians, um, who are similar sort of in their values or in how they view it or in how they want to persuade their art, uh, like me. And that's been very, very fascinating. So uh, social media is just a wonderful way to, to do this kind of thing. Of course, it's, exactly. it's, it's not always great because there are some drawbacks to it too. I mean, interpersonal relationships are more important and meeting in person than doing it on yeah. tech, right? But at least during the pandemic, this has been a great alternative. Exactly, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, when you come to Vienna and you give me a call, we can have a, a coffee and oh, see each it. other. Yeah, in real. So. I, have, I have plans to come to Vienna. Ah, um, so then, yeah. Probably so then. twice this year. Because um, as it so happens, I have an order uh, of a guitar from a guitarist from Vienna. Yeah. And um, he will receive it probably in July. Okay. So... Maybe we can have a coffee then. It would be great. Definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. No, you let me know definitely when you come and we'll have a coffee. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And there's also a quite renowned event in, I believe, August in Vienna. Um, yeah. Forum Guitare. Oh, okay. It's this festival that uh, many international guitarists come to. And I'll, I'll probably be there too. So, you know, oh, well, maybe, maybe we can work something out. And you yes. said you're a photographer, right? Yes, yes. I'm a photographer. Mm. Great, great, great. So, uh, have you photographed many musicians also? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, on my website, uh, you can have a look at a few pictures. But, oh, I love um, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But now, Stephen, tell me, what is your wish for the future? Wish for the future. Um, in, in what sense, though? For, for my private life or in general for the yeah. world or? For, your, for you, what, uh, do you have wishes? Do you have dreams that uh, here's the place to say them, then they come true? Yes, well, um, I mean, there's so many, uh, <laughs> but I, I think what I've been working on for the last few years and what I would like to continually do is establish a stronger relationship with beauty and with yeah well with beauty basically because i think that that has helped me come out of um darker times and i i have seen it help with other people and beauty is such a wide um uh, um, begriff uh, like words yeah. that you could that you know yeah. so so because you can find beauty in a conversation like this or you can find um, beauty in someone uh, making a gesture towards someone else or doing something for someone else or creating art or a painting there's so much beauty in those things and i think we seriously have a problem in our culture that we have lost beauty in many ways because we have become sort of cynical about it even using the word sort of makes people like ah come on what what are you talking about and, and yeah. because it, in the old times, we used to find beauty every Sunday in church, let's say, because that would be a point, a place where people would meet, regardless what they were professionally, regardless who they were, they found a place to connect. Yeah. And they found a place where everyone was sitting and listening to someone saying, um, sharing words, sharing thoughts. And this is sort of what, what we have lost. So now, I don't know what the consequences of that will be in, in the long term. but, but um, I mean, let, let's let's take a clear example of the color gray. A lot of people in their interior, in their houses, have a gray couch and a gray kitchen, and they have a gray floor, and they have gray, gray furniture. 
And why is this? Gray is a safe color because sort of everyone has it and gray is around us everywhere in cities, gray buildings, gray cars, gray everything. So you don't feel judged for it. When you come into a place, ah, oh, there's a gray car, it's just like, ah, oh, it's normal, you don't have to think about it. But uh, I'm sure you have this experience too when you come into some artist's home and there is like a painting that is just screaming at you because it's so wild and so strange and so different. It's sort of, you have to be attentive to it. You have to give it attention. Yeah. You have to look at it. You have to try and make sense of it. And this is what people find uh, terrifying because they will realize that they know absolutely nothing and that they are quite ignorant of many things. And I have this every day with everything that I do that I discover like, oh, I actually have no idea what I'm doing or I don't know enough about this topic or whatever. But if you are open to that, then you create an opportunity to learn. Yeah. And this is uh, a friend of mine um, gave me this advice, like just buy some random painting that talks to you or buy a piece of art that speaks to you in some sense. Uh, on, the, on the one hand, you help an artist because you support their art. And on the other hand, the art will facilitate and teach you something because you don't understand it and you have to think about it. And this is what I find fascinating in my own life because I've tried to do that. And um, uh, just looking at objects that are different or to challenge yourself with, a, with, a, with nice colors around you, you sort of start to see all these patterns. And that's why in my interior, in my house, I decide like, no, I'm gonna have a blue couch and I'm gonna have a golden table. Because oh, wow. I love it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go uh, be very bold and just do it. Yeah. And as a consequence, people who come into my in my home, they say, "Wow." Even if they don't like it, they will yeah. like, "Oh, wow, that's different." And then you, and this is also this speaks to my guitars also. And I, I'm I'm a bit in between everything here, but I try and. Condense yeah, it no, to I a understand, but it's, it's so but, interesting. Yeah, yeah. With, with my guitars, with those decorative guitars, with all those pearls, yeah. people start to view their own instrument differently because of it. Yeah. I challenge their perception of what a guitar could be in that sense. And it's not that I'm the first to do that because people do that all the time. And especially in the Romantic era, a lot of beautiful decorations were made, but we have sort of lost this after the First World War, I would say, and Second World War, uh, because nihilism and all this stuff. So I, I try to bring that beauty back, like let's invite it into our life because it might teach us something that we, you know, we should know. Yeah. And people have become, and I've had this with a customer, he found my guitars and then he didn't like his guitar in, anymore, his own guitar, okay. because like, ah, uh, there's just no detail in it and there's rough edges here and there and there's oh sorry there's light on my table reflecting because of the golden table <laughs> oh, <okay>. so there <laughs> we go <laughs> <laughs> no so and then um and then he got really curious about my work because and he's also a visual artist so he's very sensitive to this sort of thing so that helps but he basically told me yeah, your guitars has told me new ways of how i should view instruments because now he looks at a piano or at a violin and he wonders like why is there no why is there nothing that sort of ah, gives me some sort of satisfaction gives me some sort of extra thing why is it only functional it, it's, it's it's just black like 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 a like a grand piano it's just black yeah yeah why is there just uh, let's say piano forte in the romantic era uh, often highly, highly decorated with beautiful painting or with inlays, with ivory, with all these exotic materials. You don't see it anymore. Grand yeah. piano now, just black. Yeah. Black and some golden lettering. And of course, there is beauty in, in simplicity too. Mm. But if, it's, if that's only the option we have, like uh, you can only buy the black piano, like why not have another option? And this yeah. is what I try to facilitate with my guitars. I think it's wonderful, really. I think it's wonderful. And, you know, it's, you. it's like you say, it's, um, I, I actually bought a, a golden tea set once. Um, it, it's old, wow. it's uh, antique, uh, but it's oh, great. gold. Great. It's gold. And, and 
um, it, uh, it that is also something when I put it out, it, it it's so it's almost as if people they can't under, they can't decide if they like it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah. oh, gold, you know, it's like because you don't yeah. associate yeah. it with a teacup. But um, exactly. I love things like that. I think they, they also speak to me. I think it's it makes life interesting to do that. Yes, and, and, and I see that you smile when telling this story. So do you yeah. also like to provoke a little bit I in do. this <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so me, me too, huh? Like... There is, you see that golden frame there? Oh, yeah. It's it's an old, uh, it's from my grandmother, actually. And it used to be yeah. brown, but I painted it gold myself. I took out, there was a small painting in it, and it wasn't really that nice. So mm -hmm. I took that out, and it's it's an empty frame. Oh, okay. Yeah. People are not used to seeing an empty painting frame that's sort of golden, and, and it's also highly or, or, um, ornamented. Oh, yeah. You can't see it from this distance, but it's very nice. And people sort of look at it and, and you see them that they they don't know, like you say, they don't know if they like it or not. Yeah, they yeah. are yeah. They're, they're, they're sort of confused by it. And yeah. I deeply enjoy that process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because but I think it's because when when I bought it, I felt like it. And maybe oh, yes. yeah, you know, when I bought the teacups, I, I wasn't sure. I was really yes. thinking is, you know, I felt that. And this is what, what I, um, and then when I did, and then, and now I see people have that same, same reaction, but when they start drinking out of it, then they start uh, liking it, you know, because I think it's then that sudden, okay, no, but it's fine. You know, it's, it's still a teacup and I can still drink out of it. And, and, and the know. fun part is, the moment they will return home and they have tea at home in their typical gray mug, yeah, they will think oh, back remember. like, this is not golden. Like, what is this? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. Oh, Stephen, you are such a lovely man. I mean, this is so wonderful Thanks. to talk to you and you've got such interesting point of, points of view. Um, Thank you. But now for just the last um, thing is, uh, do you have a shout out for a business, a coffee shop or um, a restaurant yes. in your area that you visit regularly? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, well, because of the pandemic, everything was closed for a really long time, especially locally here, because this is a tourist area. So the infection rate was very high. Oh. Um, I do like this one thing, and it's it's an activity that you can do. Yeah, it's called uh, Aston Kick, and it's yeah. basically this incredible zip line that you can fly fly uh, the mountain off because I live in this mountain hilly uh, oh, area. Yeah, yeah, and it's very exciting. It's the second largest in Europe, and uh, mm -hmm. it's one kilometer long, and you fly with seventy kilometers, you fly uh, down to it. And I'd like to give a shout out to them. So it's called yeah. Aston Kick. Okay. They have a website, astonkick.de. Okay. Uh, will you send me the website? Yes, I will. I will. They're okay. great. And um, basically, if you want to seriously get a kick out of something, you can go there. Oh, is and it? You, okay. can, you can fly on your belly and you, you feel like a bird sort of flying. Mm. And it's very exciting. Mm. It's a high adrenaline rush. And uh, the people who work there are very nice and they give you a fun time. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you will find me there because I will be sitting there playing guitar for random people. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. <Yeah. laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Okay, now we'll, yeah. Um, and do you have another shout out, you said? Um, uh, well, I, I, I now work with this company that produces wonderful strings. Oh, okay. uh, I could give them a shout out. They're not yeah. locally here, but they, uh, they are great. They're called Dadario, yeah. and they have all kinds of products for guitars, and they're really great. And um, they produce, in my opinion, the highest quality guitar strings, very reliable, great material. And at this moment, I'm actually doing a giveaway action with them on my Instagram. Oh, uh, I don't know when you will release this interview, but maybe it will be done already. But uh, we are recording this on the Wednesday, and Friday it will be over. And people oh, can participate and win some uh, some free stuff of them that I use. Uh, myself oh okay 
No, that's fine. Now I'll I'll publish this tomorrow night. Oh, great, great. Yeah, so that will be Fantastic. in time. Yeah. Wow. Well, great. Stephen, I wish you a beautiful day. Thank and it you. was so lovely to talk to you. And let me know when you're in Vienna. That Absolutely. we can have a coffee. No. I would love that. No, you're mm -hmm. wonderful to talk to. Very exciting. And uh, I see we have some similarities. So that's very definitely. nice. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Thank, Thank you, you Stephen. Have a lovely yeah, day. <laughs> you too. Huh? And we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye. Take care. bye, -bye. bye.